Aloha and welcome back to Island Style. As the wind blows here in Manoa at the Center for Hawaiian Studies, it's a beautiful day, but we want to use our show to tell your stories in the right way, and more importantly, use it as a platform to make a difference in our community. And we want to sit down and talk with John Osorio and his family, his ohana, about how Hawaiian culture, education, even music has evolved over the decades. My name is John Osorio and my, my current role at the university is as the incoming dean of Hawaii Nuiakea School of Hawaiian Knowledge. And that school has the administrative over, you know, control of Hawaiian studies, Hawaiian language, this taro garden, and Native Hawaiian student services. Um, so not all Hawaiians um, come through our program, but we actually do outreach to virtually every Native Hawaiian who comes to the Manoa campus. Kamehameha was a fairly large kind of ohana family, and I came from a very strong family in Hilo, Elroy and Clara Osorio, and a bunch of siblings, and, and I boarded at Kamehameha for six years. But Kamehameha didn't just teach us about, about, about that family uh, relationship. It really taught us to see other Kanaka Maoli as, as family as well, as part of our of our own identity. Kamehameha also taught us to be rebellious because of the way Kamehameha was structured. Very authoritarian, really to, very much a, um, a school that taught um, about being an American. And at some point, a great many of us who went through that school begin to question that identity. And um, it really helped forge my c career and the way I lived my life. Well, and that's another thing. I mean, Kamehameha is profoundly uh, about uh, encouraging musicians, um, both Hawaiian musicians and, and all kinds of musicians. So I, you know, I was caught up in that just like every other student was at Kamehameha. And when I came out of that, that environment, all I wanted to do was play music for a living. Um, in my partnership with Randy Borden and with others like Steve Brown, who was also a Kamehameha graduate, uh, I just embrace this language and this music um, that is really a part of our, uh, really a part of our DNA as, as Kanaka Maoli. So it's so deeply entrenched in me that it has become really entrenched in my children as well. Our family was, was really caught up in the Hawaiian movement, in the sovereignty movement, in uh, social justice for Kanaka Maoli, in the environmental movement. We really were, uh, you know, very much active in those things. And my children, all of them, uh, went with us to, to different events. We, we exposed them, both my wife and I exposed them to our own political and social values. And I think those, I, I did want those to take root in them, and I believe they did. Watching my dad uh, play music to kind of finish up his sets. So he played at uh, Moana Surf Rider and the Ilakai Hotel and number of other establishments, but I, I remember being like 10 years old, going over there, and then the waitresses there would kind of get me set up with a Coke and cherries, and <laughs> I'd have my dinner, and then wait for him to finish up, and then we would go home and stuff. I think what I learned about my dad, too, is just the time that he takes for people that he loves. I mean, just all of his uh, family and friends and students that he's helped through the, uh, through the years, that um, those are things I, that I, I kind of take to heart, like just, taking time to, to um, connect with people, to build relationships, um, and, and, and to contribute to, uh, contribute to Lahui. Yeah, you know, I think the most interesting thing about our childhood growing up was probably how much music was just completely a part of everything that, that happened in the house. For me, it was, it was almost weird growing up and realizing that that wasn't the case with everybody else, that you didn't just have, you know, your father playing guitar throughout the night. It was, um, and it was something that was definitely reinforced when I was at Kamehameha. Um, I think we all sort of took different things from our experience there. Um, for me, my experience was very much like my father's. I wasn't the best student. I spent most of my time playing music in the hallways with my friends and, and you know, things like concert glee and, and song contest was, was a big deal. Some of my earliest memories are seeing dad graduate with his PhD uh, in history. And then the other, like one of the memories I cherished the most was 
and this is probably my earliest memory of my life, was going to the Onipa March of 1993 um, and being on dad's shoulders. And I was, I was only three years old, but seeing how Nani Keitra speak, uh, watching Hawaiians really starting to really organize and stand up for their rights as, as a people. And when I think of what it means to be a Hawaiian woman, I think of Honani Ke Trask, I think of Lili Kala Kame'ele Hiva. Um, I think of these fierce Hawaiian mana wahine, and I wanted to be like them. And so it was really cool, I think even in that statement, how much UH, not just Kamehameha, but for Dad and I, who have spent quite a bit of time at this university, how much UH has been a part of cultivating what it means to be Hawaiian for us, and what it means to love this place. Kameme has done remarkable things in transforming itself, becoming more and more of a, of, of, of a Hawaiian school, not just a school for Hawaiians. But there are so many things that it can do to encourage, to support um, Hawaiian knowledge, not just here at the university, but throughout the state. And, and we intend to advocate and continue to advocate both the state and, and to, to KS, you know, for that kind of support, because we believe that that's, that's what the princess actually had in mind when she thought about education. It wasn't just about the three R's. It was about, you know, bringing her people uh, into, into prominence.